Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Now today we're going to be making an Urukai scimitar from the Lord of the Rings. Enough said, let's go. Now I have a little confession to make. I have been working on this prop without you guys. I know, I'm sorry, uh, but I did start this project and I wanted just something to work on without having to present the camera and everything like that. But I'm gonna bring you guys along for the final parts of it, which are gonna be very exciting. Now in terms of starting this prop, there was a lot of reference to go by. United Cutlery, the official replicator of the uh, movie weapons and helmets and things. They did a version of this some years ago and as such, there's some great reference material online for the overall shape and size of it. So I got some reference images of that and jumped into Illustrator. I took this side on view and did my best to interpret it as a vector. Uh, I just drew around the outside with the pen tool in Illustrator and from this we can get a machine file. I sent that off to my guys who cut things out of aluminium for me and they came back to me with this. How great is that? So these are cut out of six mil aluminium and they feel absolutely great. They're very solid, it's quite heavy, but we're gonna be, we reduce the weight on this when we start grinding. But this is what I started with and this is what I set about finishing. And here is where I am at now. This is after a hell of a lot of sanding and I've put in some texture in there. I decided for my version that I wanted this bit of texture in there just to give some contrast to the whole surface finish. Um, it turned out okay, I'm not sure how I feel about it, but I don't really wanna be grinding it all out again. But we've got a lovely bevel grind from about here to the edge and it tapers in the edge. The edge is not sharp in the slightest, nowhere near. This is an aluminium prop and I want it to be safe. The only really dangerous bit is, of course, this guy, which is very sharp. But you can see there how that tapers up to the finish there and it does that across the whole blade. So right now this is at a 400 grit and I think that's where I'm gonna leave it. I may go a little more. I'm gonna try polishing it first and see how we get and then see what that finish is actually like. Now for the handle, when I designed this, I modeled in these two holes so I didn't have to drill them. Uh, it was all came like that and it all came cut out. So that's to help attach the handle. To do the handles, I first drew them in Illustrator. I drew the shape. I really love how the shapes interact. It doesn't follow the, the outside of the handle section on the blade perfectly. It's a completely different shape, which I quite like. So firstly that was traced out and then I just printed that out on some printer paper to get myself a template. I then cut out some square blocks out of some oak. Uh, this was pretty simple. I used my new bandsaw, which is a fantastic little machine, uh, to cut out some square blocks, and then I cut out the profile. That is the profile of the handle roughed out. It's not exact, but that allows for some fitment later. I then cut it in half to get two, one for each side. And these are those handles all fitted up. They've got a little bit of extra shape and beveled, which I cut on a 45 degree on the belt sander. And yeah, they feel great. These are again sanded up to about a 400 grit and uh, they feel fantastic and they're ready for finishing too. So when I was sanding this up to fit, I used a nut and some bolts through the holes in the handle here to hold it all together. This held everything nice and tight and I was able to sand everything so that it was all nice and flush and uh, so it fits exceptionally well. Uh, right now, there's just a pair of um, long rivets going through there because once this is all attached, I'm going to be a bit of glue on the handle but then riveting it on with these rivets. This will then get covered in leather eventually, um, but that is the handle. So that is where I'm at right now. So it's time to get to some finishing. So to finish up these grips, I'm actually gonna be staining them. So we can just pop these out. There these guys are. I'm just gonna be using a standard wood dye to color these and the color on this one is dark oak. Ooh. Alrighty. So there we are, that's all done. I just gotta let that dry. It's taken really well on the ends. It's not quite as dark as I would have thought, but for this project, it is okay. Now, in terms of finishing the blade here, like I said, I've got up to a 400 grit, and I'm quite happy with that, and it, it's looking pretty good. We could keep going all the way up through up to the thousands, but I think it'll be fine to go ahead and try polish right now. So I'm gonna go up to the mop and try putting a polish on it. So 
So here we are back from the polishing mop and it came out all right. I mean, parts of it came out better than others. The This part here, which will be covered, came out really shiny. The tip up here came out really shiny. But now I'm just thinking it's probably worth just going up a few grits. It won't take too long just to get that shine up. So now I've gone up to 800. I really quite like the, the finish there, but this is looking very clean for an Urukai scimitar. Like they're, the reference photos, they're very kind of pitted and rusty. That's obviously very hard to get with aluminium because it, it just won't do that. With steel, obviously you could get that. You could leave it and let it pit and rust and sort of do your best to enhance that. But on this, we've got to try and like um, just forge that finish. So I'm going to go and have a go at putting some more texture back into this smooth finish. What I'm thinking right now is using something like sandpaper or some bits of wood or bits of stone and simply using a soft hammer and striking it on there to see if this will leave an indent. Because the aluminium is quite soft, it should pick up some of that. Um, again, this is just gonna be an experiment, so I'm gonna go up and use the anvil, so I've got something good to strike against and see if we can put in that texture. So, this is literally smashing <laughs> pieces of stuff against the blade with a rubber mallet. I uh, was using a bit of tile, that sandpaper. Now I'm just gonna go back in with the fine sandpaper and see if we can just take off some of these ridges on the pits. And there we are. Now I'm much happier with this finish. That sanded up right up the grits and then polished. I even got some of the texture in there. And I think that'll pick up the blackening very well and add some nice contrast to this. This is now all prepped, ready to use that aluminium black to get a nice dark color. Uh, I'll have to degrease it first, but I've got to wait for a nicer day because it is absolutely horrible out there. It's being down with rain and I'm not doing it in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to have a go at going to blacken this blade. I've got my cleaner degreaser and I've got my aluminium black. So we're ready to go here. I'm outside on a piece of board. First we're going to degrease with a bit of cotton wool and the degreaser. And then we're just going to go ahead and pour the aluminium black into here and have a go. Let's see if we can do this whole thing. My hands are gloved and I've got my respirator for when I use the chemical. Uh, stay safe. So the grips just need to go over for a polish and then they'll be ready to attach. Here's that finish. Now I'm just going to give this a quick polish too. Okay, so in fact this finish is very delicate as it is at the moment. So I'm actually going to leave that as it is. You can see the shiny bits there that I tested down on the handle rather than up on the blade. But we're going to leave that because that is taking the finish off. But it is actually time to attach the handle. Whew. Now I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. First thing I want to do is epoxy on the handle and then we'll go and tap those rivets over. I've got a five minute epoxy, so let's do it. This stuff doesn't smell very nice, but it'll do the job, no problem. Should have mixed up a little more. I ain't gotta hurry because the other one's gonna be going off. Ah. Yeah, now we just let that go off. My glue here is dry, so let's unclamp it. Have a look. 
That is looking great. Those rivets have glued themselves in there, but we're gonna tap over the end anyway, and then that'll make sure this handle absolutely does not come off. But, oh, this is shaping up good. Right, let's go tap these over. Now, I am very pleased with that. Probably left a little bit too much on there before doing it, and um, yeah, they stick out a smidge, but it's all gonna be covered in leather anyway, so that doesn't bother me, and I think that's a pretty good job on there yeah one thing that hasn't gone too well is the blacking of this blade now I need someone who knows a lot more about um, sort of bluing and blacking to tell me what I did wrong because you know as far as I'm concerned the surface prep was good and it's taken in a few places but this is wiped straight off I didn't sand it I didn't polish it it wiped off with a soft tissue so yeah I need to know what I do wrong but we're not going to be too disheartened. I've got a way that I'm going to fix it. And that is going to be with black ball paint. This is a very good matte black acrylic paint. Should stick nicely to here. And that'll get us our black base coat. I don't want to brush this on. I want to stipple because we want to get a nice texture onto the piece. I really hope this sticks. From experience, this this chalkboard paint is incredibly good at sticking to surfaces. So hopefully we'll be in luck. And I won't be able to just pick it off. <laughs> but we'll see. This paint really is such a good paint. Um, it, it just it sticks so well. It's hard to describe how well that sticks on there and doesn't want to scratch off. You know, I've, I've used quite a lot of paints and this really is one of the best I've ever found to actually stick and stay stuck. So it is time to go in with some weathering. I've got my water-based water oils here. It's my two favorite colors there, but I also bought some others now. I've got a burnt sienna and an olive green. If you look at all the reference for this piece, it's got a bit of a green sort of tinge to it, as well as that rusty kind of overall thing if it's rusted steel. So that's what that one's for. And then we're gonna try and give it a green sort of tinge with this one. Hopefully this one's light enough. That's a little, uh, little darker than I thought. Right, let's have a look. That's really not as light as I thought, but let's get it on there. We're not being precious and we're not being too uniform. Really want to get it on there and just build up these layers of color. If you didn't see my Rivendell elf helmet, go check that one out because it was really a good lesson in layering paint to get the final finish. I'll leave a link up there for you. These browns will give it a lovely warmer texture, which is much closer to our reference. But because these are water mixed boils, I can clean with water, but it also means I might be able to mix some acrylic in there. Maybe I can mix, and then even though that acrylic will dry, you know, it might work. Who knows? That's why we do these things, we try. I'm gonna try a bit of these uh, Vallejo Model Air. They're very pigmented, they're quite runny. They are acrylic, but I wanna try and get some more rust color. So maybe these lighter ones will help me. Okay, that is doing the trick. Look at that. So it turns out for getting a base color down, I'm really enjoying these acrylic colors. So I'm just gonna work a bit more on these and then go over the top with the oils. That green is great. That green is so good. So I'm rather happy with how this paint job has turned out. It looks pretty good. I've just buffed the edge there with some steel balls to just give it a highlight. So it just catches the light there. And I think if the edge was being used, it would be not rusty anyway like that. So I used a, a medium to give this some texture, but it's ended up quite shiny. So I'm just gonna go over it with this matte varnish and that should knock that shine back and make it look a bit more how I want it to look and seal in all that lovely paintwork that we've done.
So there we go, there's the leather wrap all done. Uh, it was a little tricky to do and I had to sort of glue as I went and pull it tight. It's turned out okay, there's still a few marks here and there, but I'm going to go in and weather over the top and do a final weathering pass over everything, tie it all together and then we are done. Like I try to want to indicate a bit of dry blood on the handle, but dry blood isn't this bright red that you've got here. It's like a dark, dark brown. It's more like this kind of color. Yeah. I really want to make sure all these edges are painted because this is a real giveaway that it's just been freshly cut. Now that looks <laughs> Very, very grotty. <laughs> I think I'm gonna knock some of that paint back if I can uh, with a bit of sandpaper and we'll see how that looks. But I'm just gonna let that paint dry. And one more weathering coat on the blade. I'm just knocking back this, this leather finish. Uh, the paint was a bit dark and it didn't feel very nice, but when leather wears in, it wears. So we've got to do some extra wear just to get that to look like it's been on there for a while. So I'm just using some 400 grit sandpaper. I'm just sanding these edges. I'm just trying to get rid of these straight lines too. Just want this to, to look very natural and worn in and like it's been on there for a few years. Being stained with dirt and blood and yeah, that dry blood down on the bottom there. Here. Yeah. Looks like there's some dried human and elf blood. Yeah. So there we go guys, that's the Urukai Scimitar complete. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's got a great weight to it. Of course it's aluminium, it's not steel, so it's not it's not heavy as it would be in steel, but it's still got a very lovely weight. And with this handle all wrapped up, it moves really well. Um, again, you can't, it's not gonna cut anything. It's blunt as anything. Um, you can, if you hit something, it probably will deform because aluminium will do that. Like I said though, this is a lovely prop piece that's just gonna go on display. I'm really happy with the handle. That turned out really sort of grotty and old looking. I did give it a little bit of oil just to help sort of just you know make it a little softer, cinch it all in. Yeah, and that looks fantastic. As you saw, we had a few hiccups along the way that blacking did not take and we ended up using paint. The paint finish has turned out really great. Uh, it's got some subtle, just sort of rusty kind of effects in there. And yeah, overall, I am very happy. Now, in fact, if you'd like to make your own, I am now selling these as kits. So I have a few of these in stock. These are the exact same bag that I use, cut out of six mil aluminium. So you can grab one of these over on my Etsy shop. The link will be in the bio down below. With this, you'll get one of these, a set of handle scales, some rivets for the handle, and that strip of leather from here, which I've yet to cut into strips of leather, but a piece of leather too. So do go and grab one if you'd like to have a go, but otherwise I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Stay safe everyone, take care, bye bye.